Who's ready to plug in and recharge? On today's show, you're going to get three steps that you can take to live as a true man of God, where you're encouraged and equipped to stand up for what's right and to take the lead in every aspect of your life. So whether you're at work, out in the community, or at home as a husband or father, you're going to be battle-tested and battle-ready to stand tall on the front lines of God's army, sharing God's love, and expanding His kingdom as a warrior of Christ. Now, the gentleman that I'll be outlining this with today is an international speaker and a man that has been on the front lines helping men do this very thing for years now. Before we meet today's guest, I want to ask you to take the Men Unplugged Share Challenge. All you do is simply share this or any other episode via your email or social media account to someone else you know today. And to make sure you never miss a single episode, go to menunplugged.net to sign up to our weekly email list. All right, you ready to go? Let's do this. Welcome to Men Unplugged with your host, Jeff Jarena. Get ready to plug in and recharge your life as Jeff visits with influential Christian leaders, helping you experience the life you were truly meant to live. Hey, how's it going? Jeff Jarena here, and welcome to Episode 75 of the Men Unplugged Show. Thank you so much for tuning into the show today. If I may, I just want to give you some words of encouragement. It's something that I realized the other day. The fact that you're listening to the show to gain valuable wisdom, life lessons, and to get the right answers for the issues that we deal with as men week in and week out, I want you to know that that is admirable because that tells me, and more importantly, it tells God Almighty that you want to do what's right that you want to do all that you can do to live in such a way that honors Him, to live as a true warrior for Christ. And that's why I'm so excited about today's show, because the information that my guests and I are going to give you today is really going to motivate and equip you to do that very same thing. With that said, let's meet today's featured guest, Bishop Larry Jackson. Brother Larry, welcome to the show, brother. All right, Jeff. Thank you for having me. I'm so um, I'm so looking forward to this time with you. It's going to be a good time, I believe, in Jesus' name. Oh, I know it will. So I'm going to ask you this, and I already know the answer. You're going to be psyched up, but are you ready to recharge? Oh, absolutely, man. We look look. That's where we have to stay. We got to stay in that place. We got to um, look like a like an electric car rather than a gas car. We got to stay hooked to the hook the hook the battery and charging it up all the time. I am always hyped. And ready for the things of God, and especially when we're talking to men, because this is my, this has been my heart cry for over um, 25 years, and um, I'm I'm so excited about being with you and having this time opportunity. So I'm ready to recharge, bro. Let's do it. I'm ready. Well, you know what? I'm truly honored and blessed that you're here. And you talked about electrical car. I actually drove a Tesla once before. A buddy of mine has one. Man, uh, that thing about uh, jerked my neck back. It had so much torque. It's crazy. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I look. I haven't. I haven't driven a Tesla yet. I need to. I, look. I, I need to drive one of those. Check it out. Well, just get you a buddy that has one. That's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you go anytime you want. Okay. Now I want you guys to get this. As, as you're listening to the show right here, I want you to get all that Bishop Jackson has done and is doing. So I'm just going to give a quick bio here. This isn't all that you do. Brother Larry, but I'm just going to give a quick bio to let you guys see that this guy right here is bringing the fire every single day. So Bishop Jackson is the Southeast Regional Bishop for the Fellowship of International Churches, founding pastor of Bethel Outreach International Church, as well as the founder of the True Value of a Woman movement and the Frontliners Men's Ministry. He's the author of several books and an international speaker on issues that affect men today. I didn't even mention some of the other ministries that you're a part of, like Oak Initiative and Transformation Michigan. I mean, come on. You're a busy guy. How are you doing all this? Just a a little bit, man. I I sleep fast. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, I sleep fast. But no, it it is, you know, where the kingdom is concerned, God seems to make um, space for you to be able to do what you need to do. And, um, um, you know, I'm not just taking on projects either. I'm I'm really finding out from the heart of God, is this something you really want done or you want me involved in? Um, I love to support what is already going on so I don't have to 
create or be a, um, be in the forefront of anything. But when there is that opportunity to now give leadership, I, I will give leadership where I want where it, where it comes. And um, so it's just it's just a blessing, man. Look, you know, sometimes when people read in my bio and going through all of the stuff that's in that bio, you know, I get tired. But <laughs> when I'm just, when I'm doing it, I don't get it. I don't get tired. It's the energy and the anointing of the living God. I think so. Well, I like what you said right there, Bishop Jackson, because that reminds me of this one thing, and, and I know you know this truth. You actually just alluded to it a little bit, but we're all to do the work for the kingdom of God. This, where we live right now, is not a place yeah. of rest. Heaven no. is a place of rest. Absolutely. And we're supposed yeah. to work till yeah. we get there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do my small part and so. I am um I'm excited about um um sharing what I have, you know, with the body of Christ so that um also others can be encouraged and energized to do their part as well. Amen. Well, I want to ask you this before we get into the topic today about the emasculation of men and what we as warriors of Christ can do about it. Just take about mm-hmm. 30 seconds and tell the audience here something interesting about yourself that they may not know. Well, it, that is, you know, I, I'm kind of an open book, so it's not a whole lot that if anybody has followed me at any point at all that they don't know. But for those that don't know, um, some may not ha- have the understanding that I am a recording artist as well as a as a speaker and pastor. And so, oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, I've been, been, been doing, you know, have, 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 have a project out and all of that good stuff and don't sing in a lot of places that I travel um, just because my focus is on um, 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 the word of God and, and releasing the word and revelation into the house. So I don't, uh, I don't bring my singing hat with me a lot of times, but that's one. And the other thing is that I'm a fairly good freehand, freehand um, artist, you know, I, oh, wow. draw, I can draw pretty well. And, um, got me in trouble when my children were smaller because I had to do all the projects. You know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they aced they aced yeah. all the projects, right? Thanks to dad. That, that, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and um, um, but yeah, that that's that. Um, so those are those are a couple of things that people wouldn't know about me that I try to keep sometime undercover and um, not expose those to uh, the broader audience as much. So. Well, that's cool. I didn't know about that, that you're a um, recording artist. Hey, when you want to, just send me a link to that. And I'll put it on the show notes, how they can get your CD or something like that. That'd be really cool. Okay. I actually yeah. am, I I can sing, but it doesn't sound good. But that's all right, <laughs> though, right? Because it says, it says to make a joyful noise. doesn't have to sound that's good. Right. That's right. Just joyful. It don't have to sound good. It's just got to come from the right heart. That's exactly. Right. Play, play yeah. Right Good. Exactly. Well, let's get into the topic here because to me, this is a big issue today. It really is. So yeah. what is it about the emasculation of men? So my first question right now is, when do you think it started? Wow, that is a good question. I think it is as far back as the beginning of feminism. Um, um, and I it's interesting because I have, as you mentioned, a movement of women, which is called the True Value of a Woman's Movement. Yes. And um, I'm the one that launched that. So one of the things that cannot be is against men. So it can't be against men if I'm the one that launched it. And um, But feminism um, did a, a whole lot to try to now take men out of, um, out of their proper role. Um, and, and, you know, there are a lot of things that, um, we should do for women and women should have the, uh, the, the opportunity to do. And, you know, you know, when we start talking about equal pay and equal rights and stuff, seamless things like that, 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 that's kingdom as well. That goes without saying, we got that. We understand those principles. Right. But when you start trying to remove men so that you can be seen, anytime you try to remove anybody so that you can be seen, um, it is going to cause major problems. And so that's what happened. I think, you know, early, you know, you could go into the early 60s, maybe even back into the late 50s, um, but early 60s especially, um, when uh, we start seeing this thing really start taking on um, a life on it, of its own. Now we're in that place right now 
that there's been a systematic uh, it's been a systematic effort to um, remove men out of the limelight and to paint them as predators um, and um, um, evil evil people. You know, right. uh, one of the things that one of the things that is um, 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 interesting to me is to see all the things that's happening in media and things of that sort. And I know we may yep. get into some of that um, a little bit more, but it's all of those kinds of things are taking place in removing um, men. So that's, that's when I, you know, actually I saw before that promise keepers again, of one of those organizations I spoke for uh, for years platform with promise keepers for over 20 years. Um, we, we, we were dealing with it very strong back in the days when promise keepers was filling stadiums to make sure men understood that this is happening and this is coming. But because seemingly um, it was somewhat undercover a little bit, not, not really, but now it's more bold. Um, now, uh, you know, it's everywhere, but then right. it wasn't. And so it was hard to get men to understand you are about to be replaced if you don't, if you don't stand up and be men. So. I hope that answered it a little bit. Well, no, that's really good. And I actually saw you speak at one of those. And um, I remember I got a little keychain thing that they gave. It's the shape of a key. Psalm Mm one nineteen thirty two, And it's one of my life verses now. I run in the path of your commands for you set my heart free. That's what God does for us when we trust Christ for our salvation is our hearts are free. So, no, this is good. Now, I want to give this definition here for what emasculation is. I want to give this definition because I knew what it was, um, Bishop Jackson, mm-hmm. but I looked it up and it really, really hit home even harder. Here it is from Merriam-Webster's yeah. Dictionary. It says to deprive of strength, vigor, or spirit. Did you hear that, guys? I don't want that to happen to me. And I know, Bishop Jackson, we don't want that to happen to other guys. So Here's my next question here. We see the issue, right? And we'll get into some of these um, reasons for it. But I guess for me, why isn't the church, why aren't we speaking out against it? And I'm not just talking about pastors. I'm talking about every man of God going to the ministry leaders and saying, you know what? This ain't right. This is Mm -hmm. not right. We got to do something about it. Why are we so quiet? The quietness has to do with, in my estimation, the pulpit. The pulpit has not <clears throat> um, rallied men enough. We we passed off the mantle um, of um, um, trying to um, um, disciple men to another man in the church, rather than the the leader the pastor leading the men into the face of god mm. and and to end into how to now function in society as men so you, you, we can't pass that off that that's in my that's in that's this is in my opinion okay um even if we get someone to help us we've got to take the responsibility for making sure that the men in the house are now built up as men and and as a man, and if there is a pastor that's listening and, and is a female pastor, then she needs to get her husband vitally involved. Or um, if she gets someone else to do this for her, she still needs to have a voice in there. Um, um, because it's very important that the pastor, it needs to come from the top down, if right. you will. And so we've been very quiet because I think we're quiet at church. If you think about this for a second, Jeff. Um, most of the, when uh, you hear a pastor's use the pronoun, um, her, honey, darling, but that's not speaking to me. You mm, see, right. You see, you see, you can't use those phrases and be speaking to me. Right. Um, um, and, and, you know, I changed that years ago that when I, when I'm saying anything, I use that, I use that. Um, he, him, come on, man. I'm talking oh. to the men in this house to be leaders right. in this house. Right. And so I think that, the, again, I think we're quiet because first of all, it's not happening. It's not happening from in the church the way it should. And then two, 
And then two, society has um, put the political correctness thing on us so strong that we're scared to speak up um, in uh, the public forums or in the workplaces and whatever and, and deal with this because it's not going to, we don't be, re, um, believe it's going to be received because I don't think we've taught men how to do it yet. Is that making sense? No, it does. And, and actually that reminds me of an episode that I just posted a couple of weeks ago, episode 71, where uh, I talked about with my guest, uh, brother Steve talked about why are men stopping going to church? And I think right here, this is kind of what you're saying. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to single out churches. That's not what I'm trying to do, or single out pastors. That, that's not what we want to do here. This is Men Unplugged. No, 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 no. And, and I know you're not doing that either, but what we're doing here at Men Unplugged, yeah. and I know what you what you do as well when you speak, is we're trying to help guys ignite their faith in Christ, to strengthen their family if they're married, and to help them lead with power and purpose. Not their power, but the Holy Spirit's power. That's what we're trying to do. So when yeah. I'm talking about church is what I see a lot of the messaging is. And if you're a pastor, listen to this, man, take this please with a grain of salt. Um, But what I see, and to your point, when I'm talking to men, when I'm speaking, I'm trying to speak to men first and foremost, Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. they're the leaders of the household. They're the ones that are going to get these things turned around in the right direction, right? That's how I see it. Mm And cut me off here if I'm if I'm talking too much on this because I'm getting passionate about it. But mm-hmm. what I no, see is whether it's ministries, whatever, we're telling guys, hey, the message is we gotta love everybody. Yes, we do. Let's let's uh, yeah. be compassionate. Let's be sincere. Yes, we're called to do that. But the messaging that's missing is we got to go claim the victory. We got to go win the yeah. battle that's already won. Let's go fight more. Yeah. Let's get on the front lines because you know this. In Ephesians 6, all the armor that we have is on the front. There's nothing right. on the back. We can't right. retreat. Right. So I'm I'm right. getting on the pulpit here. I'm going to come down here. No, you, I'm going to you, give you, you a you minute. Preaching. No, you're preaching. That's good stuff, man. <laughs> but one of the things, yeah, one of the things that one of the things that we've done in in our house here in Charlotte at Bethel is the fact that um, we have. You know, again, you mentioned I have a ministry called Frontliners and Men's Ministry, and that is to get men on the front line. What I found, Jeff, was I I, I went to Soul Career and I spoke in Soul from in Soul from um, the from Soul all the way to the the 38th parallel, um, <clears throat> always where North Korea and South Korea are looking in their face. So I spoke wow. to bases all the way up from from Seoul. And what I discovered shocked me, and I didn't I didn't catch it until I got all the way to the 38th parallel. And what I discovered was in Seoul there were there were um, large PXs, you know, uh, places where they shop, and a right. lot of stuff going on. Um, when I got to the 38th parallel, the the PX was some little small hut. Hmm. Um, and what I what I kept what I kept realizing what hit me was that they had more time in Seoul than they did at the at the point, which is what they called it, because at the point they were they were facing the enemy every day, and and wow. that told me the front the front lines are much different mm-hmm. <laughs> than the place of ease, which is in the place of our soul, if you will allow, allow the connection there. Right. Um, I like that. And, and, and I went, Oh my goodness. So we've got to get men to focus attention on the front lines because our enemy is a great enemy that we've got to deal with. He doesn't have all power, but he does have some power. Right. And we've got to, we've got to be men with a front line focus. That we're we're more focused on how we're going to engage this enemy that we can see, opposed to being away from the enemy, um, knowing that he's there but away from the enemy and have all this extra time, free time, and all of that kind of stuff. So that was my focus. So at my church on Sunday morning, just um, if you walked in my church on Sunday morning, um, our service started at ten thirty. Well, at ten fifteen, my men. Uh, at the altar with their sons. There are no Ooh, women there. 
That is cool. Okay. That is really so, cool. So, so, so my men are at the altar and they're praying for the service. They're praying for their families and their households. We're praying for the city because we're frontline soldiers. Right. Of, of which, of which, at the end of that time, which is um, uh, a tremendous time, we sing together and all of that. We sing a song. We got a song, a battle cry song that we sing together at the end of that time. And uh, and I will, again, because of the name of the ministry, Frontliners, when I say I yell to them, Frontliners, and they do the military huh, back to me. That's okay? cool. Man, you're giving me goosebumps. Now, what, you're giving me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> now, what happens is, what happens is when I take this abroad, when I go into other churches, and I teach other churches about this, and I teach their men, and I get them on Sunday mornings to do the whole thing, okay? Right. Everybody, every, the, the, the women will usually stand up and cheer. Wow, that's cool. And I, it, almost, it almost without fail, almost without fail. And, they, and I'll say to them, and they're not at the altar. I just say, men, stand to your feet for a moment. Let's show the ladies what we learned this week. Let, let me let me let me do this. I said frontliners, and they'll say, Whoa. and the and it's, it's such a great sound. And the women are set up and cheer. And I and I tell the men when that happens every time. I say, see what just happened? Your women have not heard you sound like men at church. Mm, amen. <laughs> I like and that. They just heard. They just heard their men sound like the men the man they that that they know that looking at the football game that's excited about his tools and all of that or whatever he she heard that man at church because many men will come to church have their arms folded man right even during the time of worship as though god has to convince them to worship him you see right and so you, you, we have to change that. So that's the mentality, bro. If we don't have, if we don't have that right, if we don't have it right at the house, we're not going to have it right in the society. So the quietness again has to do with we're quiet in in the church, and if we're quiet in the church, then how are we going to be loud in the society? I, I spoke also at um, Fort Leavenworth. I've done a lot of stuff with the military. And uh, and I and I and I spoke at Fort Leavenworth, and Leavenworth is more. And for for the listeners who may not know, Leavenworth is more than a prison, right? Far more than a prison, but the but the prison is there. But that's the place where officers are trained. Okay, um, if you're going to be a general, in most cases, you're going to go through Leavenworth. Okay, for the training. So there are a lot of non-commissioned officers there as well, but still, it is uh, um, it is a it's an awesome place. So I, I spoke there. <clears throat> and um, all during the week, I'm hearing them train and do that, and I hear the hoods. And matter of fact, whenever you, I've been around them, and anytime they're getting instruction from an officer or a, a superior, they're going hood sir, hood hood sir. And I'm right. going, okay, this is great. That's that's great. That's that's confirmation. And then I would go to church on Sunday. Now watch this, Jeff. And I go to church on Sunday, and I sit in the place, and I hear the worship. And they may be singing and all that kind of stuff. But the t- intensity of the week is not on Sunday. Mm, man, yeah. And I, and, I, and, I have, and I have more than one time got up and said, what happened to who you are on, on, on Monday through Saturday? Who are you then should be here on Sunday? Or reverse, or reverse it, or reverse it. Either way, that's, right. that's how it's going right. to be. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. So, how did you become churchy when this you're in the greatest battle against this enemy than you were than you fight in the natural? Mm. And that always have gotten their attention that you became church focused rather than first kingdom and militaristic mindset of the of the church. Now, watch. Even in the church, we're talking about the emasculation of men in the society. But in many churches, we've taken the warfare mentality away from um, the church. Yes, sir. We've taken hymns out of the hymn book, like, you know, Onward Christian Soldier and all that. We've taken, you know, we've taken those hymns out, those kinds of hymns out of our hymn book. 
So wait a minute now. Come on, time out. Right. Am, Jesus is called the Jesus is called the Lord of Hosts. Right. Which is which is the Lord of Armies. You see. Mm. So if he's the Lord of Armies and I'm in his army, I in the world I, I gotta act like a soldier. Amen. You see? So, Amen. so as, as, look, let me let me not get on my let me not get on my pulpit. No, keep going, pulpit, keep so. going, keep yeah. going. No, keep going. This is good. Yeah. So that's the thing that I'm I've been I'm looking at because until the church understands, <clears throat> the church has to understand who, um, who she is in the sense that these men in the house have to act like men. The other thing that I do <clears throat> every year is I have a week long shut in with my men oh cool what do you do there okay they shut in the church all week wow they they sleep there they for like seven there. days or five days or what does that look like it looks like seven days wow 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 and the no showers no it. showers that's yeah. rough no they get the shower they get the watch <laughs> we, we can't do that stinking stuff <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say okay. yeah but yeah but what happened is no, but what happened is, is this, um, the men who cannot do that, they will go to work and then they'll come from work right to the church. Wow. So what, that, what, what I've been doing that now, I've been, I've, I've had that for 20 years. Okay. Every, for every year for 20 years. And, um, and the men so look forward to it every year in October. Now, this is, a, this is the deal about that, that when I talk to other pastors and leaders about the fact that we do that. First of all, they want to know how I get that done. How in the world do you get them to come and stay for a whole week? Okay. Right. Yeah. What's the, the incentive? Is, what's the incentive for them? That's what they're thinking. The, in, the, in, the yeah. The incentive is that God told men to come away three times a year. Oh, <laughs> that's big. See, it, see, this was see, this was so important to God that for for three times in a year, God called men away. Right. And it wasn't optional. It wasn't optional. It wasn't optional. But yet and we changed it today. People, but yet we changed it today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If anybody going to spend time away with God, it's going to be our women. Mm. You know, we're too busy. We're too busy. And so that's the, that's the other trick of the enemy that has come. So that's the kind of stuff that when I'm talking about focusing on men, those are the kind of things you've got to, you know, and you don't have to do those things necessarily. But at the same time, there need to be temp- it need to be more than a breakfast on a Saturday morning, right? Okay, exactly. All right, and where you know you eat and you talk a little bit and you go where on your business. And, and I'm not I'm not mad at that. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not mad at that because I've been involved in too many of those as well. So I'm not about anything will it, it something is better than nothing. Okay? Right. But there has to be a time where you speak into the lives of your men so that they will know how to maneuver through this cultural um, um, soup that we got out here that is really trying to um, quiet us and replace us. Matter of fact, one, one gentleman wrote it this way, that the feminist movement and many women try to make their men hairy men, hairy women. You see? Oh, wow. It says, wow. They're trying to make them hairy women, you know, because they want us to get, want, look, you know, you got to get in touch with your with your with your feminine side, right, you got to get right. in touch with your emotions. And okay, come on, please. Okay, so <laughs> let's, let's keep. Let's keep hey, going. I got one. We got one emotion as a guy that we should always have. I'm hungry, man. Come on, that's the emotion. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Feed <laughs> but, me. Feed but me. but the other one is look. Here's here's the other emotion. Here's the other thing we should be focused on. What you're saying, there is just. I'm telling you that talk right there. That that response right there. I got so much wisdom. Right there, but I can, I can tell you right here, the thing that we really need to be focused on is when you come to know Jesus Christ, you mm-hmm. have an eternal relationship with Him. Mm-hmm. I see it as you're not really on the front line until you actually get out there and start doing something for God's kingdom. That's the front mm-hmm. line. Mm-hmm. And so when you mm-hmm. are out there telling people about Jesus, you're sharing the gospel, you're telling them what he can do for them, you've stepped across mm-hmm. the front line, and now you're knocking on Satan's door. And you're yeah, now absolutely. public enemy of Satan. Yeah. 
And you know what? You cannot yeah. turn around. So that's why you need this refreshment, this energy, this recharge that Bishop Jackson is talking about to get in with the band of brothers and not just for, hey, man, let's go chat for 30 minutes to an hour. But I like what you guys are doing because you're bringing this energy, this this culture of the church needs to be led, number one, by Jesus Christ. But he is saying, men, I've given you that task to hold the torch. Mm -hmm. I really love that. Hey, so can we do the thing real quick? Huh. Let's do it. Ready? One, two, three. Huh. Huh. Yeah, I like it, man. I'm ready. Hey, who's getting fired up right now? I'm telling you, I am getting fired up. I'm jumping up and down. This is crazy. <laughs> okay, so here's a, here's some scripture verses, and and if I miss some, then you you pour it in here. But I'm trying to give some scripture verses that I found that would kind of uh, back up here what we're what we're saying, and and one of them is the charge that actually David gave Solomon before David died. Uh-huh. He said, look, where was it? It was in 1 Kings chapter 2, and he said, do your best to take the charge to be a man. Follow man, God's be commands. Yeah. Be a man, uh-huh. right? Be strong, right. be powerful. And then I think, I think part of what we're doing here is that we have so often, and I'm saying me included here, I fall into this trap. I try to please everybody. I don't want to make anybody Mm. feel bad. We get into this, this Mm. mode of PC Mm. being politically correct. Well, you know what? Mm. When we're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, when we're telling somebody about Jesus, you don't have to worry about being politically correct because you know what? You're telling them how they can have eternal life, whether they like it or not. It's our Mm -hmm. job to do that. Okay, we can't win somebody to Christ. The Holy Spirit does that. But we, our job is to be prepared and to be ambassadors of reconciliation. We're not going to be ambassador of reconciliation if we're sitting behind the scenes. We got to get out there. We got to get out there. Okay, and here's another verse. And you, I want you to pour some verses in here that that really have spoken to you about this. But the other one here that I see that talks about how we're just accepting things, we're not really speaking out, is that uh, Galatians 1.10. Here's what Paul told the church at Galatia. He said, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please mm. people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. That's right. Man. That's so I want you, what, what would you say to that? Anything else kind of hit this thing home here before we get to the next question? Well, I want to- well, you can go to Proverbs as well. And Proverbs in chapter 20, verse 6 says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. It says, But a faithful man who can find. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Which, is a, which is an amazing verse. One of the things that um, we set our, again, our ministry and our focus around, as far as men are concerned, is men helping other men. Um, what, what men will understand as well, I'm going to give you that in that scripture that relates to that, but what most men will acknowledge in a men's meeting is that they don't listen to women. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they, they are hard-headed when a woman is talking, but they <laughs> will listen to another man. Right. You see, and um, we've been coached that way. We, we've done it from Little League football, from T-ball, from, 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 from high school sports, college sports, from military to business world. We know how to submit to a man. Um, that will speak in, in into our hearts, our lives. Even if he's harsh, sometimes we can we can handle that. Okay, um, but when you do it right, you get discipleship. And so Tim, so Paul is Paul tells Timothy in Timothy chapter in Timothy two and um, two and two, Second Timothy two and two. He says, "And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, he says, the same commit thou to faithful men." who shall be able to teach others also. Right. So this is like, this is what we call level four leadership or discipleship. It was Paul to Timothy. It was Timothy to faithful men. It was faithful men to others. Wow. So I like you that. Got, you got, you got four levels here. you got the, you got the, the leader, the father um, to Timothy and Timothy now is taking what he's gotten from his father and giving it to faithful men around him and those and and commissioning them go find yours you see 
so that it doesn't get stagnant, which is one of the things that, and, 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 uh, and again, this, these are things I'm, I, I, I discuss. I'm not against. I just want to bring some adjustment to, adjustment to it sometimes in the sense that uh, when we have accountability groups, they tend to go nowhere. The accountability group is the same four to five guys every week. And they're talking about their issues or what they're going for, but they're not taking that and going and starting their own group. Right. You Amen. See? So, so, so it becomes stagnant. Um, Bishop Wellington Moon called those groups. He he coined the phrase called sin management. Oh and wow! That's interesting. He said that they're basically managing their sin. They're right. saying, This is what I'm struggling with. Am I still struggling with it? I'm, I can tell you because you're my brother, and we're managing sin, but we're not we're not a discipling anybody. Mm. We're not discipling anybody. And so um, 2 Timothy 2 and 2 gives us a discipleship model for men, for men. The, 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 the other mindset is that you're not a true disciple until the person you disciple have a disciple. Amen. Amen. You, you see? And so that's what this verse does for me. You know, it says, okay, um, I've got to, you know, I've got two young men right now that I am two young men in the midst of all that I'm doing, I've got two young men that I'm discipling Amen. In my, in, in, within, my church, within my church. And so my goal with them is you got to go find somebody. Right. You can, once, once you're at a place, I'm going to release you to go find you somebody. You got to go find somebody to disciple. And you got to tell them once you have take, once you do what I'm telling you with them, then they got to go do it with someone else. You see? So, no, that is so good. That. I, absolutely. And that's something that that I try to model, too, is that, look, you, I have mentors. I have a lot of guys that disciple me. But in the same sense, I try to disciple other guys, too. That's what we have to do. You have to have a Paul and a Timothy, right? You yeah. have to be a Paul, but you have to find a Timothy. Yeah. That's what we that's need, right. because the more in, in, in kind of the back of what you're saying here, if you're getting all this information all this wisdom from God's word. You're, you're getting all this information from everybody else. And that's part of what we're yeah. doing here on the show. I mean, coaches like Bishop Jackson, subject matter experts. I mean, the, the best of the best, the way that I see it every single week on the show, giving you some knowledge, biblical knowledge and life lessons and practical tips. And here's what, here's what, it, um, somebody like a Paul is going to do for you. And what you're going to do for somebody else that's like a, a Timothy to you is you're going to give them those shortcuts. They can overcome those pitfalls. They don't have to deal with it. Yeah. You're going to say, look, man, there's a big boulder right here, and here's what it is. It's called this particular yeah. sin. Here's how you can overcome it. You know why I know? Because right. I dealt with it, and this is how I got around it, because somebody else helped me get through it. Right. So I lost that's my right. train of thought here, man, because we're just firing this thing no, out no, at no, all no, angles. No, you, you, you. No, you're great. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. When we get back, we're going to continue with all this firepower, all this wisdom that Bishop Larry Jackson is throwing down on the show today after we hear this quick message. Are you ready for the ultimate playbook on sharing the gospel with those you come across? The step-by-step game plan that will coach and prepare you for every one of those divine, potentially life-changing moments that the Lord brings your way. One that will help you understand your role and God's role in sharing the good news. We'll give you those conversation starters. We'll teach you how to share your own personal story of salvation in a way that affirms God's love and grace to everyone you have a chance to share in it to and how to remediate any fears that you may have about witnessing. If you are, I want to give you the chance to get my upcoming book at a discounted price. It's a book that I'm so honored and blessed to have so many Christian leaders Christian authors, mammoths of the faith that have already endorsed the book. This book will help any born-again believer confidently and accurately share the gospel. It's written in such a way that anyone, regardless of your age, biblical knowledge, vocation, or even your spiritual gifts, can be ready to share the good news when God opens that door. And He will open that door. The question is, will you be ready to go through it? With this book as your coach and the Holy Spirit giving you the power to share the gospel? The answer is yes, you will be. Now to have a chance to get a discounted copy of the book that's set for a publishing date sometime in February to May of this year, make sure you sign up to the Men Unplugged email list at menunplugged.net. Brother Larry, are you ready to rock the supercharge round? 
Come on, let's do it. Let's rock it out. All right. Give them some practical tips on how they can apply what we're talking about today so that they can actually walk in this victory and living out as a true man of God. And you can give two, three, but I'm really looking for at least three, if you could do that. Yeah, well, again, one of the things I think that must happen first and foremost is a, a new dedication to to the church, the house uh, that they're a part of. That must be primary. They've yes. got to have a focus. And there are so many things that have pulled us away, um, especially as men, from serving in the local assembly. You know, right. now that sounds real pastoral. It really does. Um, um, but I, I'm not dealing with it just from a pastor's perspective. I know men. I know men need to be around men, and I know if you develop this camaraderie in your in that church amongst the men, if you can develop that, now you're going to have friends for life, and you're going to also help to advance the causes of the kingdom. Amen. There, there's an amazing thing that I believe that the Father does in our lives. As we take care of what belongs to Him, I believe He takes care of what belongs to us. I mm. believe that He in, energizes us in such a way to now be better in every other area of our lives than we've ever been before. The wow. next thing that has to happen is there has to be a dedication, a new dedication to the Word of God. It, 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 is, it is not enough just to read a passage in the morning and feel that like we've been in the Bible. Um, um, one of the one of the one of the, the the things I've said to our congregation, and um, and I'm saying it aloud to others, is that and when I travel as well, is to say I am really tired of preaching to people who don't read their Bibles. Mm. Okay. And and I think that needs to start with men of being in their Bibles. And right. I, and and this is going to sound a little nitpicky, but I really want you to have the book. I don't mind computers. I got it. I don't mind iPads. I got it. I don't mind the phone. I got them. I got Bible apps on every one of those things. I don't mind any of that. I, can, I think they can be convenient when it's needed. But I think you need to be in the book. I think you need to be turning some pages right. and, knowing, and knowing your Bible. And so I think as you read your word, and the people ask me, so where do I start? And I tell them the Bible, you know. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> where, do you, where do you start? The Bible, the Bible, just jump in, at both feet, you know. It's almost like, where do I jump in the pool? Anyway, right. you jump in the pool, man, you jump <laughs> in the pool. So, <laughs> exactly. Um, it's, and so it's, a, it's the same thing. So I think that first, a dedication to the house, a dedication to the leadership of the house, and make sure that this is our house. Let me go back to that number one for a moment. In our church, in our church, the women cannot move anything. That is that is against the law. Wow. And if That's I good. catch a man standing and around watching a woman move something, he is in trouble and they all know it. <laughs> so if they catch Whoa. a if they catch a woman moving something, they'll run to her and say, No, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Where you want to move it, where you want to do that? Don't lift that, don't carry that. I got it, I got it. Because men, I want men to be men at, in the church. I want the women to be tender and, and, and feminine and, and, and pampered and loved and just enjoy life, receive, right. because that's, your, that's, that's her position, is to receive. Our position is to give. Husbands, love your wife, even as Christ loved the church mm. and gave himself for it. So we have to be that man that gives. So that's the dedication to the house. Make sure that, but then I get that, I get that, I get that commitment to the house by being in the word of God and as letting the word of God read me. We remember that the, the, the Bible is called, is, 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 is in parallel to the brazing labor that was in the, um, the tabernacle. In that whole tabernacle structure, you had the, you had the brazing altar, and then you had the brazing labor, and then you had the tent of meetings. Mm, well, yes. that brazing labor, that brazing labor was made of the looking glasses of the women. And so that's where the water was, and the priest had to wash after the blood sacrifices on the brazing altar. Well, while he's washing, because it is made of the looking glasses, he sees his reflection. So the washing of water by the Word of God allows me not only to be in the Word, but also to see who I am. When I'm reading the Bible, it's reading me, Right. you see. 
Right. So, so, so that's the that's the that's the secondary kitchen. And the last thing I will say is that you've got to become priests of your of, of your home, and to be the priest of your home, you've got to be men of prayer. You can it, you've got to lead the prayer. You cannot let you cannot let your wife or um, or your children even out pray you or right. lead you in prayer. Um, we had a saying, Bishop Bishop Wellington Boone, who is my father in the Lord. Um, gave us a saying years and years ago, and he gave it with BAM. It was B-A-M. BAM. Okay, what is and, that? Um, I want to hear this. By a mile. Wow, okay, by a mile. Okay, so what does that mean? I'm going to out-serve my wife by a mile. I'm going to out-pray my wife by a mile. I'm going <laughs> to... Uh, everything is by a mile. She, I'm going to lap her in the things of God. I'm not going to let her lead me. I'm going to lead her. Now, that is, hear me now, not doing that from this, I, you know, I'm the man, you got to do what I say. That is not it. A servant leads, servant leadership is I lead you and you follow me based on the fact that I'm, all, I'm, I'm serving you. Right. And so it's by a mile. I'm going to outserve you by a mile. I'm going to outlove you by a mile. I'm going to do everything. So, so as priest of my home, I've got to outpray my wife by a mile. Now, that's difficult because my wife is going out to God. My wife is up early in the morning going out to God. So if, if that's the case, if I'm going to do that, I've got to be on my, I can't just go, okay, get this. she's got it. Okay, bless the Lord. She's praying for the children. She's praying. But no, that is not going to work. Not in my world anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, and that doesn't, and, and, and I'm not saying that because I'm a pastor, leader, speaker, none of that. This was happening way before I had any of that. Matter of fact, when I became a Promise Keeper speaker years ago there, I was interviewed. I was living in Fayetteville, North Carolina at the time, and they interviewed me on the Christian radio station to see, you know, um, how do I feel about being, you know, a Promise Keeper speaker? And I said, I, you know, this is really nice. And they, and they said, you know, what would your wife say about you being a Promise Keeper speaker? I said, well, it was, I, she needs to say that. You might need to call her. And they said, can we? So yeah, call her. Let's let's call her. And and she said this to them. She said, My husband was a promise keeper before he was invited to speak. Wow. Wow. I like that. I you, really do. You you, you see, I get I it. I get men, it. Yeah, I would tell men that at promise keepers all the time. I said, You can't go you cannot go home and say I'm a promise keeper. Your wife has to proclaim that. Wow. Wow. The ch- your children have to say, You're a promise keeper. If you give, if you make your promise, it's going to be done. All of that comes out of that priestly mindset. So, dedication to the house, word of God, prayer. Man, I tell you, if 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 if, if we will put those three things in order in our lives, I promise you. And then and then not one, two, and three. The truth is, they 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 all together. Come on, it's a circle. Where yeah. you started trying? Well, okay? it's Where right. Where you started trying? Uh, well. Right. I tell you what, men unplugged. If <laughs> if you haven't gotten out your pen and paper right now, you're probably driving. But you need to pull over because he's just given lessons left and right, sermons left and right. I mean, you're this is just a power packed episode, and it reminds me. Um, it says in the book of James, I think it's James six. I don't know. You 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 probably correct me on this, but it says the prayers of a righteous man yeah. availeth yeah, much; yeah, they yeah. prevail. Prayers of a righteous yeah. man. And when you go to the Lord in prayer, I mean, you just go in the man, wherever you are. I mean, there's a, I've talked about this book before uh, by the 17th century monk, um, Brother Lawrence, he, you know, uh, the practice of the presence of God. He was always talking to God, always praying. Yeah, right. But the best way, the easiest way to see what the Lord wants you to pray about, you got to get in his word because that's the way he speaks to us. And it reminds me of this quote. You may have heard this quote, but I read this the other day. Um, former President John F. Kennedy says, don't pray for easy lives. Instead, pray mm. to be stronger men. Mm. Man, yeah. that hit me. I was like, okay, I'm going to start praying for that. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. So we we yeah. knocked this thing out of the park, and I'm going to give you the chance at the end of the interview to give your final parting tip of wisdom. But I want to ask you this, because I ask every guest this, because it's so important to me. This is the most important question, and that is, how did you come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Well, bro, I, 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 
I I pretty much grew up in the church, uh, but nowhere near saved. <laughs> right. Um, but I grew up in the church, and um, there was clear a clear understanding um, that God's hand was was on me, and everybody could see that. I I remember even one night um, deciding to take the Michael the the, the Jackson Five song "Daddy's Home." and change the lyrics and i changed the lyrics to discuss daddy's home and jesus and the, the anointing of the lord came on me so mm. strong it scared me wow and i ran i ran from the things of god so i ran into the world as strong as i could run into the world to do everything i could do and um i was um i, I am a, i am a technician by trade computer technology so i work for com- computer technology i work for ibm and places like that and, um, did a lot of that and um, had a lot of money back in back in the day, working in the corporate in corporate America that way in the technical technological technology area. Got to a point though, man, that I lost it all. It was uh, the long the long and short of it. Lost everything, um, um, right to the living, crazy living. Lost everything and had to um, eventually um, leave the Midwest, which I was living in Cleveland. Um, Ohio at the time and had to move back home to Richmond, Virginia, um, was living um, in a place where I didn't even have running water nor lights. Wow. And, and, um, and um, in that place, I heard my, my, my grandmother's um, admonishment who had passed um, my great grandmother. She was, she was long gone, but I heard her admonishments to me. She says, when you get, when you get low enough, you'll call on Jesus. Right. And um, I was at that point of lowliness. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. And when I um, called on Jesus, I said, Lord, if you are who you say you really are, I got to know it. Mm, and in the, in the place I told you, I didn't have light. I didn't have any light. And the room lit up. Man, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The, Hallelujah. The room lit the, the room lit with light that I knew was not and there was no way for light to shine through because I was in a back room. So there was no way for light to come into this room. And this light filled up in this room and I felt a presence that I knew I had never felt in my life. Mm. And um Jesus. And it was Jesus. Got, yeah. Yeah. And I got up from that place and I my father um my father um is a pastor, was a pastor and, and still is a pastor and um um, I called him and I said, man, can I get home? Can I come home? You know? And, hmm. um, I told him what had happened to me. He said, yeah, I, uh, your mother said you can come on. And I, so I came back home and he had all of the commentaries and all the things because I, something had supernaturally just happened to me and I didn't understand it at the time. But, um, then, you know, it just unfolded to the point that I understood that I had to make Jesus the Lord of my life clearly. And I did. And, and as they say, the rest is the history. Um, um, so it was a real supernatural encounter, um, that, that happened to me. Um, it doesn't have to happen that way with everybody, but that's what happened to me. I was alone by myself. So nobody could tell me, nobody can tell me nobody, somebody coerced me into something. Somebody tried to make, you know, I, and I was like, I was so far from God. <laughs> I was so far from God. And for him to find me and to come to me, and reveal himself whatever way just through that illumination of that light of his presence um, was amazing for me. So, um, and then I, I'm, you know, I got actively involved in the, in the church, but also I met this guy I told you about named Wellington Boone, and he discipled me into who I am today. Well, I can tell you right now, that is a powerful story. Praise the Lord for your salvation. And, and you said something in there that I actually have in my upcoming evangelism training book. Remember, I was telling you about the book, and and yeah. here is the thing: you said something about your story, like you know, it was it was intense, but not everybody's story has to be that way. That is true. And yeah. here's the deal: your story, whether it's dramatic, whether you don't think it's dramatic, whatever it is, your story of how you came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior matters here on earth. And it matters yeah. in heaven. It, number one, yeah. you'll be able to reach people 
that Brother Jackson and I will not be able to do. Because you will have a story they can relate with. They're going to like your face. They're not going to like my face. They're going to like the tone of your voice. That You're going to have interests that that we're not going to have. Whatever. So I just say right now, don't ever think that, you know what, I wish I had a story like him. No. No. We all have a story that's powerful. And when you said um, the rest is history, what's interesting is that's two words. His story. God's That's story. Right. I really like that. That's right. All right. Well, That's right. my my daughter, my just real quick, Jeff. My daughter told me one day. She says, "Daddy, I'm, you know, I have five of those. <laughs> I have five daughters. All of them are vital, uh, actively involved in the church, and all of that." And she said to me one day, uh, she said, "Daddy, I wish I had a testimony like everybody else's testimony because they were talking about all the things they've come through and done." And he said, "I wish I had one of those." And I said to her, your testimony is greater. Mm. Your, your testimony is, I never did any of that, and I still came to know the Lord. Amen. Amen. You see. My so, wife is the same so way. In, My in, wife is the same yeah, way. Any way, you, <laughs> any way you come is the, is the way you come. And, and that's a great testimony. Oh, man. <laughs> matter, of fact, it's, matter of fact, it can be more difficult to come when you have that kind of lifestyle than the lifestyle that we were leading. Right. Okay. Oh, and, and you know what? I was far from God for a long time and don't want to get into it here but because they've heard the story. But, you know, basically some of it was I had suicide thoughts for four years of my life. I was doing so much bad and I was trying to blame God, Bishop, for mm-hmm. my bad choices. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. my bad choices. And I came to know Christ. I understood it's by His grace that we're saved, yes, sir. not by what yes, we do sir. or don't do. We're, we're saved by His grace alone. And once I did that, it was like 180 degrees running to Jesus instead of running away. Um, yeah, that's good. That's I a big it. deal. So I want to ask you this. So now that you're a pastor, you're doing all this stuff. You've been doing this for years now. We're all targets as believers in Christ. But when you're mm. the angel of the church, when you're the head pastor of a church, the target's a little mm. bit bigger for you. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? I know you talked about you, you get in the Word, you're praying, you're doing all this stuff, but what is it that's really helping you besides that to help you say, you know what, I need this to stay you know, out of the enemy's way, so to speak? What is really helping you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, look, you know, all of us, uh, all of us got something that we have gone through or have uh, or dealt with in our lives, but um, and that's and the, and hell is always coming at us. First and foremost, as as we talked about first, I try to stay in prayer. Mm. I all I do, I try to stay in prayer. I have, I think I have so many different prayer meetings. It's unbelievable, <laughs> but <laughs> that I'm involved in. The, the other thing is, is I re, I try to remember that the end time church is the feet of the Lord, mm. and the the feet are closer to the dirt. You see, mm. and 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 so we're going to get dirtier than most of the church have ever gotten dirty. Mm. And as a result of that, we've got this. Jesus said, if your feet is clean, then your whole body is clean. Wow. You see. Right. And so I try to keep my walk right. Look, and and, and we're human. We all make some some, some kinds of mistakes. I'm not going to even even front and then say that I'm perfect and no way in the world, I'm going to say that I'd be a liar. But at the same time, try to walk perfect before your God. The Bible says walk humbly before your God. And so that's where I, I am, bro. And I'm always pleading with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me to walk, lead me, guide me in the way that I should be and remove from me the situations that I don't need to be around or need to be involved in. Um, the people that I don't need to be associated with so that I don't get off. And and that, that's got to be our cry. And if you do that, I believe that he hears us, and I believe he causes it to take place. Mm, man, all right, I got two more questions for you, and then we'll say goodbye because I know you're <laughs> busy. I know you are, and I'm just stretching this out. So if you can stick around for two more questions, we'll we'll knock this thing out. What is God showing you right now? Yeah. Um, the thing is, I think, I think that he's showing, he's saying, I am ready to, to move. Um, I'm ready to move in this generation. Um, that's what I'm, I, I keep getting that, that, that there is, we're on, we're on the cusp 
of a tremendous move of God like we've never had before is 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 my belief. Yes. That we're going to yeah, that we're going to we're gonna we're gonna absolutely see God move. And so the the thing is what's on my heart is to stop doing what we've always done, trying to think we're gonna get something different. Oh, that's big. So, Say that one more time. That's <laughs> really big. I like that. Yeah, we we've, we've got to stop doing what we've always done thinking we're going to get something different. And again, that is the definition of what? Insanity. Insanity. Absolutely. Yeah. And and that's exactly what we do every week, almost, you know, in and out. We do it every week. We do everything the same, and we think we're going to get different results from God. And we're going to get different results in the earth. And it is not going to happen. It just ain't going to happen. Right. And so, so, so that's the other thing is changing, changing what we are doing to get different results. Amen. Amen. All right. Last parting tip of wisdom that you can give the guys listening right now. And then how can they get a hold of you? And I'm going to add one more thing. Then I'm going to give you a chance to pray for our listeners before okay. we go. Yeah. Again, I, I would, I would, I would really ask, ask these men to, to be very vigilant and, and watch um, what's happening around them. Um, you know, we, we didn't get in that deep into the media and all of the right. things that are happening to um, take men out of the societal mix. Um, we've got to be, we've got to be watchful, be watchmen on the wall. Um, Isaiah 62 tells us to be watchmen on the wall. We've got to, we've got to be very, we can't just be couch potatoes um, and not paying attention. We've got to really pay attention. Mm. Because if um, um, we and, and that that would be my my exhortation is just just pay attention to to what's going on around you. Take note of it. Not only just pay attention, but also take note of it. That's a good okay? word. Um, and um, the way they can find me is they can find me at um, our our website is Bethel B E T H E L. Um. um O I C the letter O the letter I the letter C um, at uh, dot church Bethel O I C dot church you can find me there um, naturally you can find me on Facebook you know um, Bishop Larry Jackson and you can find me on Facebook and places like that so um, I'm going to be in Michigan um, in a couple of months in Rochester doing a men's meeting actually cool um, for for Rochester First Church there. In, um, in in Rochester, Michigan, and so um, I know you recently had um, Rick Wozwack on. Absolutely, um, great, uh, great guy. He, yeah, he will be he will be uh, putting that information out so that um, um, men will know that we're doing this. Okay, so uh, so that's the kind of stuff. So so that so that's it, man. So let's move in there and pray. All right, Father, let's go. Father, I thank you so much for these men that have listened to us. And God, we, we are praying now that we've said something that would spark in the hearts of your men uh, the desire to increase in their commitment towards you, their commitment towards their local church, their commitment even towards their families. So we ask for that in Jesus' name. Father, we say that we don't have it all, and we don't know it all, and we're not right about everything. But God, the things that we are right about is our dedication towards you, mm. our heart commitment to you. That we are we are right about. Amen. And so, Lord, let these men come to that place of rightness, not doctrinal rightness or doctrinal confect of confusion, but right hearts towards God. And let us hold each other's arms up and help each other to become the men that you have called us to be in this hour. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Amen. Amen. Bishop Jackson, thank you so much for being on the show today. Man, this was truly an honor and a blessing, and it was like a free coaching session is what today was. <laughs> oh, amen. Well, I appreciate it. All right, that wraps up today's show. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our email list at menunplugged.net to get all of our weekly updates and have a chance to get a discounted copy of my upcoming book. When you join the email, I'll send you a free digital copy of my first book, 10 Steps to Power and Purpose. Make sure you check out the show notes of this episode, episode 75. Just type 75 in the search bar. Until next time, stay plugged in and recharged. God bless. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. 
There's plenty more to see at menunplugged.net, including key resources and ways to engage with Jeff in his training and speaking forums. While there, don't forget to subscribe and receive a free gift. We look forward to you joining us next time here on the Men Unplugged Show. Oh, 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 oh,